My name is Nick Moyer, I'm a Chief Photographer with the Sydney Morning Herald. I specialise in bushfires and severe weather and have been doing so since the late 90s. This season is really what I've been unfortunately training for for the last 20 years really. It was off the scale. There's a thing called area ignition, where essentially an area will just get heated up and heated up and, and particularly uh, trees like eucalypts will vent all their vapours into the, into the air. But what was occurring is there was a smoke plume over the top which stops this flammable air from moving out. We were just watching the fire just slowly creeping up and then there was just a very slight southerly. It just moved through and allowed uh, oxygen or some sort of fuel mixture to occur and the entire 300 metres by 50 metres deep just went up at once. Filled the air with millions of embers. Everyone's just run. It was a lot of <laughs> And also thinking about, okay, I'd really be bad to get burnt here. We all pulled back, except for one fire who got into a truck that was right up against these flames and then moved his truck out. I'm trying to file pictures, which is difficult in those sort of circumstances, and I'm saying, hold the front page! The fire did move, swept through areas, destroying a number of structures. Late in the day, we were waiting for the fire to really blast into a street in southern Orangeville. And then uh, we had the VLAT, the very large air tanker. As soon as I heard the screaming of the jets, I just you know, put the camera up, just focused, shot. And then once the stuff was coming down, I was like, everyone get down! It was like, get down. I've still got all the pink on my helmet. Um, and that was a pretty spectacular shot. Um, it, there's not many pictures of being dumped on by, by an aircraft like that. There was some shots of um, fire activity that I hadn't shot before, so actually getting a lightning bolt from a pyrocumulo nimbus, so a fire thunderstorm, uh, that's really difficult to do. Getting one when I was at Colo Heights was, for me, it was a good box ticked. <laughs> this was really one of those fires that they had been fearing for 50 years. It was just in a really bad position. And that was, yeah, look, I was getting tired and then to have that Fire and rescue guy hit. I mean, you're talking a lot of adrenaline, and and also, I, I'm, I was exhausted by that stage. I actually really did need a break. It had been two months of just solid fires, and, and I really needed a break. There is a lot of footage from professional photographers and videographers, as well as the public of these events happening. They'll be studied by the fire behaviourists for a long time, and it will help us understand and help map in the future fire movements and what days to watch out for. It's a, I think a great accomplishment of the visual media in this set of fires. It's very different to what we experienced in the, in the fires in the past. Mm -hmm.